I'm having lunch with Mickey Mouse and dinner with Spider-Man. This is the Theme Park Character Dining Throwdown. Hey, man fam, today I am super excited because I'm going to not one, but two different character dining experiences, lunch here at Walt Disney World, dinner over at Universal Orlando, to see how both of these properties handle character dining. I'll be talking about the different food, the character interactions. I've never done the character dining at Universal. Did you even know there's character dining at Universal? Not everybody does. I'm also eating at a restaurant that I haven't eaten at in a while at Disney World. I hope you're ready. I hope you're excited. Let's get to it. I'm starving. Kicking off the day, we are having lunch at Hollywood Studios at Hollywood and Vine. Now there is a lot of character dining in Walt Disney World. There is character dining with the princesses, with Mickey and friends, with Winnie the Pooh and the gang. There are a lot of different options. There are a la carte character dinings. There are buffet character dinings. There are family style character dinings. So many great ones to choose from, but I went for a buffet with the classic characters because I think that's the most thing to compare to a buffet over at Universal. I actually haven't been to Hollywood and Vine since it is a buffet. When it reopened, it was uh, a la carte and the food was very good, much better than b prior to the closure. So I was actually a little sad they brought it back to a buffet because I think the food wasn't as good and the food tends to be better when it's a la carte, but I'm excited to try it and see what the chefs have come up with. My favorite character dining in Walt Disney World is Topolino's Terrace over at the Riviera Resort. Been there on camera. I like the Garden Grill at Epcot. I like Tusker House at Animal Kingdom. Those are a couple of my personal favorites with Mickey and the gang. I also really like Crystal Palace at Magic Kingdom with Winnie the Pooh and friends. And then of course you meet the princesses at Cinderella's Royal Table, which I'm going to very soon, so stay tuned for that. And Akershus at Epcot. Got all checked in at Hollywood and Vine, and just a few minutes later, I got the notification that my table was ready. Now, Hollywood and Vine is interesting for a few reasons. One, they have different characters at breakfast than at lunch and dinner. At breakfast, it's Disney Junior Play and Dine. So if you've got a little one that likes Fancy Nancy or Vampirina, you're gonna wanna bring them here for a classic Disney breakfast with them. But at lunch and dinner, it is your classic friends. It's mini seasonal dine, and the characters are dressed for whatever the season is. So right now, it's the springtime dine. It'll soon be the summertime dine. They do Halloween in the fall and Christmas in the winter. So you are gonna get to see the classic friends in really cute outfits. <laughs> Hi, Minnie. She's so cute. Look at her little dress. It's the first day of our springtime dine. Oh, perfect so timing. Fun. To dine here at Hollywood and Vine, breakfast is $42 for adults, $27 for kids. Lunch and dinner are the same, $59 for adults, $38 for kids. That includes the all-you-care-to-enjoy buffet, as well as a non-specialty, non-alcoholic beverage. So if you'd like an iced tea or a soda, coffee, juice, anything like that, that is included. And then there are alcoholic beverages that are available at an upcharge. They have a few cocktails as well as a limited wine and beer menu. Got seated, my server came by and took my drink order, and then Minnie Mouse came by. Oh my gosh, you're the cutest! Look at that twirl! Oh my god, thank you for having me to lunch! <laughs> and now I'm headed up to the buffet to grab some options, see what we have going on here. It's quite a large buffet, but there's two sides of it, so don't feel like you need to go through all the way, just go to whichever line looks shorter. The buffet starts with a couple of different breads, salads, chicken noodle soup, and chili. Some fruits as well, peel and eat shrimp. And then we start getting into the hot entrees. So here we've got a variety of different potatoes. We've got sour cream and chives mashed potatoes, a salmon dish, baked chicken, caramelized Brussels sprouts, roasted potatoes, and olive oil crushed potatoes. So if you like potatoes, which I believe many of you in the Man Bam do, you're in a good spot here. I'm gonna go for the sour cream and chive with potato, I think. I also love Brussels sprouts, so I'm very excited to try these. Moving right along, we've got a roasted mushroom farro risotto, and that does have the plant-based logo on it, which means that is vegan friendly, which means whatever cheese is on there is plant-based cheese. We've also got some roasted broccoli and carrots and some spring peas and pearl onions. More sides right here. We've got beef stew, white rice, pork. Ooh, that pork looks good. Some squash mac and cheese with shrimp and bacon, meatballs, all kinds of good stuff. Now, the only differences between the two buffets are your carving stations on the end. So you've got roasted turkey on this side. You've got some beef over on this side. But besides that, the chef confirmed they're exactly the same. And right here in the middle, you've got the kids buffet with chicken nuggets, tater tots, mini corn dogs, baked chicken, plain mac and cheese, green beans, and pasta with red sauce. But anyone can eat this. You don't have to be a kid. Eat off the kids buffet. Go nuts, parents. I'm gonna grab a little bit of the uh, plain mac and cheese to compare. I'm also going to get some green beans because I really like green beans. Perfect timing coming back from the buffet because Mickey was like two tables away when I got back. Hi Mickey! Look at your, oh, you're 
so dapper. I love this outfit. <laughs> that is one thing I don't love about character buffets and why I prefer places like Topolino's and Garden Grill is because you kind of have this like stress moment of going up to the buffet and missing the character interactions. So you can kind of see where they're coming from. You can always ask a cast member if they think you have time to make it through the buffet. Um, but that is one thing I prefer about like the a la carte or the family styles because you're seated the whole time and you're not worried about like, oh my gosh, Mickey, you going to pass my table? If they do pass your table, they will come back, or you can kindly ask your server or ask one of the character attendants, hey, Mickey actually came by when I was at the buffet. Be very friendly. They'll make sure you get to see all the characters that are at that experience, but I do think the buffet adds like a little bit of stress when it comes to these dining meals. All right, let's take a look at what I got. Like I said, I was going to do a little of everything. Um, I went for some mashed potatoes, Brussels sprouts, some of that plant-based risotto, two kinds of mac and cheese, a meatball. I went for the prime rib, as well as an iced tea. So let's start eating. Starting with that roasted strip loin and the horseradish sauce. That's honestly better than I expected. It's a little bit fattier cutter meat than I would order like at a steakhouse, but it's not gristly or anything. It's really tender and I really like the creamy horseradish. So definitely not the best steak I've had in Disney World. Certainly not even the best steak I've had on a buffet. That would be Boma, um, but better than expected. Now let's try some of these sour cream and chive taters. Ooh, the chive really adds a nice little layer of that. They're really creamy. These are very good mashed potatoes. This next dish, I'm so excited to see it on the menu because this was my favorite thing when it was a la carte. It's a pork chop and it's got a creamy polenta and like a sweet and smoky barbecue sauce on it. And I asked the chef and I confirmed, this is the one that they were serving a la carte. So I'm really glad they brought it to the buffet. That is great. I think it was slightly better when it was served a la carte because it wasn't, it's not sitting out, but that pork is cooked phenomenally. Pork sometimes has a tendency to be dry when cooked in mass, and it's not. It's got a little sweetness and tanginess from that barbecue sauce, and there's just a little bit of spice plus that creamy polenta. That is delicious, and I'm very glad it made it to the buffet. That pineapple meatball now. Mm. You know, I was expecting that to be dry too, but it's not. A little bit of sweetness from the pineapple. I don't really taste pineapple specifically, but you do taste a little bit of tanginess and sweetness in the dish. They're fine meatballs, uh, no complaints. This is the fancy mac and cheese with the shrimp and bacon. It's a little salty if I'm being honest, which I think is because it has both the shrimp and the bacon in it. I like the big curly cube noodles and I like the addition of the bacon to break up the richness of the creamy cheese, which is very good. It's just a little salty for me. Now I'm gonna try the classic kids mac and cheese. Very basic, very simple, very cheesy mac and cheese. Delicious though, no complaints. You can tell it's made with real cheese and not like craft mac and cheese, which I'm not knocking because I love in spades. On to our veggies. Here's those Brussels. I had high hopes for these, but they're not doing it for me. They look like they're gonna be really crispy, but they're not actually, and they're also over salted in my opinion. There's also something sweet on it. Like it almost tastes like cinnamon or something. These are not my favorite and I love roasted caramelized Brussels sprouts. So kind of bummed about those. Now I'm going to try this plant-based mushroom risotto. Mm. Honestly, I didn't know if I'd ever eat mushrooms again after The Last of Us, but I love mushrooms. That's really good. It's really creamy. I definitely wouldn't know that's plant-based if I didn't read the little card with the logo because it tastes like there's some kind of cream or cheese in there. Strong mushroom flavor, so obviously you have to like mushrooms, but that's a nice option for uh, my plant-based friends or my mushroom friends. Not my mushroom friends, not like clickers or anything. I mean like if you like mushrooms. Plain green beans, very simple, cooked well though, and a plain roll, which tastes like a plain roll. Update, I took a bite of the adult mac and cheese without any of the proteins and it's much better. So I think the shrimp and the bacon are what's over salted, but on its own, the pasta is really good. I would say the highlights that I tried were definitely the strip loin because I wasn't expecting to enjoy it so much. I, I really do like that pork and polenta. The mushroom risotto was quite good and the mac and cheese. I liked the mashed potatoes as well, but the meatballs, the green beans were kind of generic and I was a little bummed out about the fancier mac and cheese initially as well as those Brussels sprouts. Yeah, you look so Lovely and ready for spring. So dapper. Goofy, what's your favorite thing to do in the springtime? Fishing. Oh, of course you like to take Max. And you got the you got the cast down eye to eye. I love that song. I do. I love it. <laughs> How are you? 
You look so. N I'm doing great. Is this a new ta A new collar? Oh my gosh, you are so festive for the springtime. Do you think Mickey will take you on lots of walks now that the weather's nice? Yeah, it's beautiful outside. <laughs> Pluto, I have a question for you. My dog loves to eat peanut butter. Do you like peanut butter? Oh yeah, that's a dog's favorite. Are you aware of the cheese tax, Pluto? The cheese tax, that every time Mickey or Minnie go to the fridge, they should give you some cheese. You like that idea? All right, I'll, I'll make sure they know. I'll tell them about the cheese tax. <laughs> saw Pluto, saw Goofy, they did a little dance number. And now it's time for dessert, which despite both sides having a soft serve ice cream machine, are not the same, so you're gonna to wanna to check out everything. You've got soft serve ice cream, both sides have chocolate, vanilla, or twist. And let's see, we've got a creme brulee cheesecake, a peanut butter and jelly tart, a candy magic bar. That peanut butter and jelly tart is glittery. I would like to eat it. It's so glittery. I also love a magic bar, because they've got like, it's kind of just whatever in there. I'm gonna get this one that's got M&Ms clearly visible. Yum. They usually have like oatmeal and chocolate chips and all kinds, coconut, all kinds of stuff. All over here, let's see, we've got a Mississippi mud pie, which is an Oreo like pudding number. These adorable carrot cake cupcakes that have, is this R2D2 wrappers? Little R2D2 wrappers, cute. Wonder what those are left over from. There's also a plant-based apple crisp and then this seasonal bread pudding, which I just asked a cast member what that means. And she said, basically, they take the leftover pastries from breakfast. So like the apple turnovers and the cinnamon rolls and the croissants and whatever else they have. And they make them into bread pudding for lunch and dinner. She said it's the best thing here. So I'm gonna grab a little of that. And then you know what I'm gonna do? I'm making it a la mode. I'm gonna take this baby over to the ice cream machine and fix her right up. They're all in there. I feel like they should come visit you, right? Yeah. Yeah, they should come visit us. Maybe we could go on a picnic. It's a nice spring day outside. Yeah. That would be delightful. Thank you, Minnie. All right, I saw Minnie again. She is so cute. Oh, and Mickey's right there again. So I'm getting like the double character service, which is awesome. He's so cute. But I am gonna try dessert, but. I'll wait for Mickey. Hi, Mickey. How are you? Good? Are you enjoying the nice weather today? You look so nice in your springtime outfit. I saw Minnie. She looked really beautiful. Yeah, you know it. Yeah, you see her. I know. You're so sweet. <laughs> I don't care how old I am, I will always be excited to see characters. And there's something just so sweet and like so many memories from my childhood about seeing Mickey and Minnie. They just warm my heart. Uh, but let's try dessert now. I'm gonna start with this bread pudding because my ice cream's kind of melting. Look how delicious that looks. Yeah, that's, that's delightful. Normally the buffet desserts are kind of meh, like they're kind of just fine, but that's actually very good. If you can, wait till they put a fresh one down, which is what I did because it's warm and it is gooey and you can taste the cinnamon, a little bit of that sweetness from the apple coming through and the craisins add a little bit unique texture, a little tartness, plus to mix the warm gooey bread pudding with the ice cream. That's really good. Definitely a Molly dessert because it's sweet and it's absolutely dessert, but it's not too sweet. It's not artificially sweet. That's awesome. Now let's try this glittery peanut butter tart. I really like peanut butter and jelly. And if you look, it's got the jelly on the bottom and the peanut butter on top. The peanut butter whipped peanut butter reminds me of the peanut butter pie at the Contemporary, which is really good. And then you've got one of these flaky pastry cells, a little sweet jelly. I don't have any complaints about that either. That's better than most of the little desserts I've had on these buffet bars before. And I think it's beautiful in its simplicity. Now here's the magic bar. Again, it looks like it's got Oreo, coconut flakes, M&Ms, oatmeal, probably some kind of nut. There's a lot going on in that, but as a coconut fan, I like the coconut. You can taste the coconut, so if you don't like coconut, maybe skip it. Um, or it's maybe a good way to introduce you to coconut, because you can also taste the M&M, you can taste the nut. It's not anything super special. People have been making magic bars forever, not just at Disney, but it's a fine dessert. And now, last but not least, the cupcake, and I'm gonna teach you guys something. 
As someone who used to take pictures of cupcakes for a living and has eaten hundreds of Disney cupcakes, these cupcake wrappers are the absolute worst. They have them on small ones and they have them on big ones. They're really hard to get off and if you try and just rip it, it won't rip. But I'm gonna show you how to get it off and not ruin your cupcake. There's actually a seam on it right there. You gotta find it and it actually says open on it but most people don't realize that. You then have to rip right where it says open and it'll rip right down like that. Then you're gonna rip it around. I'm telling you, these things are the worst. You rip it around like that, and then you'll be able to just like, boop, pop out your cupcake. So you're welcome, not ruin your cupcake that way. I don't know why Disney uses these. They are such a pain. They look cute, I guess, and maybe they stand up better than the ones you'd use at home that you just pop in the crate, the little crinkly ones, but there you go. Although I have ruined many a cupcake, and I've seen many people ruin a cupcake trying to get their cupcake out of there. Carrot cake cupcake. Somehow that's the sweetest thing I've had. If your kids don't like carrot cake, give them that because there's so much of that whipped cream cheese frosting and it's the sweetest cream cheese frosting I've probably ever had. The carrot cake cupcake part itself is very good. It's moist, it's delicious. I really like carrot cake. I know that's not for everybody. For me, there's too much of this frosting on it. Part of the reason I like carrot cake is it's usually not as sweet as other cakes, but there's a ton of that frosting on it. However, it's well executed and it's got a cute little R2-D2 wrapper. So I'm actually very pleasantly surprised by the quality of these desserts because normally at buffets, I'm very take it or leave it when it comes to the desserts. And it's like, there's way better desserts out in the park and I only eat stuff because you paid for the meal. But I'm actually pretty impressed, especially like that peanut butter tart and the bread pudding. Wrapped up my meal at Hollywood and Vine. One of my pro tips whenever you leave a Disney sit down restaurant, ask for a to go cup. If you got something like a soda or an iced tea or a coffee, something that comes with refills, you can take one to go and then you've got a drink on you. Overall, I'm actually pretty impressed with the food at Hollywood and Vine. Now, no part of me thinks that it was worth $59 before tip to eat that food. You're paying for the high cost of character dining because it's character dining. And that's true both here in Walt Disney World and over at Universal. And $60 is a pretty standard cost for a sit down character lunch or dinner. Again, a little bit less, usually in the $40, $45 range for breakfast. I actually do prefer character breakfast because one, I think it's hard to mess up breakfast and there's something really nostalgic for me about eating at a character meal and getting my Mickey waffles and everything, but also because it is less expensive and you can save a little bit of money doing that when, again, you're paying for the character experience. I do think the character experience is pretty average here at Hollywood and Vine. It was Mickey, Minnie, Pluto, and Goofy. That's who it typically is at lunch and dinner. Again, their costumes are gonna change. So if you're looking for those classic characters that are not the ducks, not the chipmunks, then you're gonna find them all here. I did get to see all of the characters twice in the hour and a half I was sitting there, which I feel like is pretty standard, but they definitely were following the kind of love and shove method of character dining, which is where they're gonna be at your table for a minute or less, and they're gonna give you hugs. If you've got autograph books, they'll sign them, they'll take pictures with you, and then they're gonna move on to the next one. It's not a super long experience, but I always recommend character dining, especially to those with young kids who wanna meet the characters anyway, because sitting in a meal inside the air conditioning for an hour, hour and a half, certainly beats waiting in four or five different Different character lines outside in the heat. Overall, I think Hollywood and Vine is a fairly average Disney character dining experience. I got to meet all of the characters. I got to enjoy a, a meal that was, again, better than I expected, but not worth the high price tag on its own. I do think they elevated several of the dishes since the before times. I remember coming with Alan before I did any kind of theme park content creation. We came here because we wanted to see the Christmas dine and then go to the Osborne Spectacle of Lights. Now I'm dating myself. Uh, but I remember the food being very bad and I didn't think the food was bad here I just thought it was pretty average one last pro about Hollywood and Vine is that you can use Hollywood and Vine as your Fantasmic dining package so if you want to both do character meal and see Fantasmic you can pay a little bit more for the meal and you'll get reserved seating at the show currently there's no lightning lane there's no dessert package so if you want reserved seating at Fantasmic the dining package is the only way to do it so this could be a kind of kill two birds with one stone moment Overall, I think this was a pretty standard character dining experience here at Walt Disney World. I enjoyed myself, but let's see what Universal has to say. See you there. We made it. One costume change and miserable drive down I-4 later. Let's go see Spider-Man. Unrelated to this video at all, when I tell you to avoid coming at spring break or the holidays, this is why. Almost made it inside Islands of Adventure, but I actually have to head over to the Will Call kiosk first. One big difference between doing add-on experiences here at Universal compared to Disney is that often you need to go to the Will Call kiosk to get a separate ticket for the prepaid experience. 
We had to do the same thing when we did the float and dine for the Mardi Gras bead tossing. Keep that in mind, it'll make sure that you get it checked in smoothly. So you're gonna need your credit card that you booked with, as well as the confirmation from your email. Touch here to pick up tickets and scan my QR code or type it in below. Tickets printing. And this is what you're gonna use to pay for at your experience because you prepay for these when you book it. Made it into Islands of Adventure and now I'm headed to Marvel Superhero Island for my meal. Currently, this is the only character dining experience at Universal. Prior to the closure, they also had a Despicable Me one at one of the hotels where you could dine with Gru and some of the minions and the girls. Also last year, they offered some seasonal dines. They did a Halloween Horror Nights one where you could dine with scare actors and some of the characters featured in the Halloween Horror Nights houses like Michael Myers. Uh, they also did a Christmas dine last year where you could have a meal with the Grinch. Curious to see if they'll offer either of those again this year. If you'd like to see those, let me know down below. But for the regular character meals year round, this Marvel one's the only one. I for one would love if they offered a DreamWorks character experience. And maybe since they're refurbishing the area over at Universal Studios Florida where Woody Woodpecker and Curious George used to be, it seems like they're gonna be refurbishing that into a kid's area featuring some of the DreamWorks characters. Maybe they could make something happen. I would just really like to eat with Guy Diamond, you know? But for now, I am headed to Cafe Four here at Marvel Superhero Island. This is normally a quick service pizza restaurant that serves jumbo pizza slices, a couple pastas, salads. It's pretty average. I will say the pizza tends to be better than Disney's small puffy pizzas at their quick service restaurants, but it's certainly far from the best food at Universal. However, for this experience, it's set up as a buffet, so I'm curious to see what we're gonna have. The Marvel Superhero Dinner is $52.99 for adults, so pretty comparable to the Disney price. Included with the cost of your meal is an all-you-care-to-enjoy buffet, as well as a non-specialty beverage like a soft drink, coffee, iced tea. They do have wine and beer here available for an upcharge as well, just like they did over at Disney. And a photograph of one of the characters. I don't know what this is. The Mammoth. That's my company. Nah. -uh. Yeah, huh? Tell everyone to like Mammoth Club. Do Sounds you... like a great place for me. You heard it, everyone. Captain America what did I just endorse. endorse? Just like fun videos and hanging out with your friends. Bring all the Avengers? Yeah. Bring all the capes with me? Yes, please. Down to Mammoth Club? Can I hold your shield? Well, no. <laughs> so much has already happened. Just got in here, sat down, ordered my beverage, and Captain America showed up, and he let me hold his shield. So, it's going well. It was lighter than I expected. Hi, Spider-Man. How's it going? What's up? How are you? Not bad, just hanging out. Yeah. What's your name? Molly. Spider-Man. Nice, nice to meet you. you. Hi, I'm Thor. I'm one of the Avengers. <laughs> I'm so worthy. Where Can are you, you guys from? Could you pick up the hammer? Yeah. It's coming from far away. Okay, we'll wait. Do you want us to get you some pizza or anything while you're while you're waiting? Yes! Yes! Yeah. Oh, I love that. Um, give me two, two cheese. Um, one for Captain, just because I'm trying to get on his good side. Sure. Um, I have a cookie with my face on it? I yeah. don't want that. that you don't want to eat your no. own face. Me out. I understand that. All, all the kids are eating my face. <laughs> um, I don't know how to feel about it, Yeah. but they're doing it. You don't so. feel great? No. Did anyone ask if you, they could put your face on a cookie? No. I didn't get any royalties from that. I mean, it's a handsome cookie, but you know. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Well, maybe you should be honored that you're facing on the so. cookie. There's not a Wolverine cookie. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I'll take that. But. But yeah, that's pretty weird. Yeah. You should talk to someone about that. Thank you guys. I'll see you later. That's okay. You guys want a picture? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh. You're an adventure, man. Yeah. Oh, not anymore. But thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Spider-Man. Of course. Bye. See you later. Watch out for goblins. Oh, will do. And uh, full cuts and octopus arms. Good thinking. Bye. So much has happened. Spider-Man came over, took me over to take a picture. Uh, also, pro tip, don't be a, a silly goose. Uh, it's going to print out two things at the machine. It's going to print out your dining ticket and a photo card. I forgot the photo card, like a silly goose. Don't be a silly goose. Make sure to get your photo card, but they're helping me out. So team members are awesome, uh, but just a pro tip for you. Anyway. Cap came over, Spider-Man came over, he took me over to take pictures. Um, and it's like, the character interactions are awesome so far. The characters are really funny, they're interacting with us. I'm actually here with my friend Megan, who's Miss Wizarding World, who I've talked about a lot. Go follow her if you ha aren't already. Um, but they're like really engaging and really fun, long character interactions, much longer so far than the ones I had at Disney. So, so far this is really fun. Um, but I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm gonna tell you guys a secret. I don't know any of the other characters that are here. I've only watched MCU Marvel content. 
I don't know who the X-Men are. And that's like... You're as fast as a swamp bug on a hot skillet. I'll find out. I'll play it cool. But... On my other uniforms, did they not have any X-Men shirts when we went to the store? No. They didn't have any X-Men shirts. But I keep looking in all the stores and there's nothing about me in there. Not that's yet. rude. No, not yet. I know. There's a deck of cards in there though, and I keep trying to tell Gambit about it. Because I want me to be like the queen on there. Yeah. I think that would be good. Really cool. Where are you from? I'm from Mississippi. Mississippi, yes. okay. Where are y'all visiting from? Orlando. Have Orlando. you heard of it? Oh, y'all came so far to come and see us. You must be we exhausted. did. We did. So when you came here, did you drive or did you fly? I flew. You flew, right? So do you use yeah. a cape or no cape? I don't, I, not a cape. No it doesn't. Cape. Right. Edna, do you know Edna? She told me not to wear a cape. No cape. I've heard that's yeah. the thing. No cape. Yeah. I don't think Storm got the memo though. No. She, I mean, she's she lovely. Looks good. She looks great. She looks great. Do you guys like do your hair and, and stuff together? Do you guys get ready together? Like yes, superhero besties? We get ready besties? right next to each other. We do our hair and our makeup because it's important to look good when you're fine because then you feel good. Thank you. And also it might intimidate the man, you know? I appreciate that. So like, oh, Lipstick. Here's a pretty lady and then I punch him in the face. Oh. In the mood for a hot date? In a bullseye. Lipstick throws them off. Yes. I'll be in now. Yeah. What have you two been up to today? Oh, you know, just hanging out. Specific. I, like, yeah. Try to any keep. Any bad guys today? Is it? Is it? You a bad guy? Sometimes. Uh, uh, it's up. Why? Like, what he do to you? I do, he, I don't like the way he's looking at me. You know. I mean, that's kind of how he always has to that, look. Yeah, that's just his... Because his, of his eyes Because thing. of a thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm not as familiar with him as some of you... Uh, your stories. You know? Yeah. Can I see your claws? They're pretty ferocious. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be that's intimidated. That's why I use them on the back end. That, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, we appreciate that. So what's everybody's superhero power? Um, my power is talking. I can talk to anyone and usually get what I want out of talking to them. Yeah. We gotta make you come to become yeah. a, a, an X-Men Yeah. Because kind of like Loki. You know Loki? Yeah, of course. We have a lot in common. Oh. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Do you have a, do you have like a sibling like Thor where you don't get along? No. No, 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 no. no. Just so me. Just solo? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Even better. So then, okay. Yeah, I'll join. I like Thank you for the you? offer. Where are you from? Me? I'm a New Yorker. Oh, sure, sure. Yes. When you're in New York, what do you think's better? The pizza or the bagels? <laughs> pizza. <laughs> How's this pizza yeah, no. compare? No comment. <laughs> it's not New York pizza. How yeah, about that? sure, sure. When you're in New York, you just, you, everything's just you know, perfect. It's the best. Yeah. It's the best. I feel like the bagels are home to New Jersey, though. Okay. Now, have you guys not done my ride yet? Yes. Yes. I like to spin it very fast. Right? It's, and especially if you go on like a wet ride beforehand. That's like the perfect, like... It's like the, the dryer. Exactly. That's the solution. I don't like the wet rides, but maybe it's because I'm not riding your ride right exactly. after. There you go. You fix it. I feel like I need to find a home here. Just, Come over anytime. Come really? over anytime, yeah. My husband will cook. I can't cook, but he can. Can you tell my husband to cook? Yeah. That Who? would be nice. Who is he? No. Mr. Storm? T'Challa? That's your husband? Yeah. Good job. Thank you. Upgrade. Wolverine to him? You know it. You know it. So, but yes. Uh, okay. But if anytime you guys want to come to Wakanda, let me know. Oh, I will. I'll come for you guys. There we go. Awesome. Yes. Well, can I get a picture with yes, you? Yes, please. Awesome. Who would you say is your best friend? My best friend? Outside? It's gonna. He won't agree with this. It's Logan. You think it's Logan? It's Logan. I, okay. know, I know it's Logan. He I wouldn't say it. that? He wouldn't say it in return, but at oh. the end of the day, uh, certain people are going to be there for you, and fortunately it's him. Yeah. Don't tell him I said that. I won't. Yeah, thank you very much. It's like a more of a lip seal, probably the key type of deal. I don't need him having that hold over my head. Oh, oh yeah, it's a therapy session. I appreciate you. Yeah, you're welcome. We're here. That, you out. The characters are coming by so quickly, and the interactions have been so 
fun. What's really interesting though is technically we're talking about comic book Marvel Universe here, not Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is why Universal is allowed to have this because they entered into a contract with Marvel prior to the MCU existing and prior to Disney purchasing Marvel. So that's a lot of people ask why Universal is Marvel when Disney owns it. But that's why. In fact, when Disney was purchasing Marvel, they put it in the contract that Disney could not have any Marvel characters represented here at Marvel Superhero Island uh, east of the Mississippi River, which is why Disneyland can have California Adventure, but Disney World can't have Spider-Man or Captain America, but they can have the Guardians because the Guardians aren't represented here at all. But because of that, these characters have to pretend to exist in the comic book universe, not the MCU. And they've been a little fuzzy on that. Some of the characters are like almost talking about the MCU. Like a, like a couple of things that Spider-Man and Cap were saying were like almost MCU references. But then Storm told me she's married to T'Challa and my brain broke. But I Googled it and that's true in the comic books. And then I asked her, uh, she said she was gonna come over for dinner with T'Challa and I asked her if she uh, could ask T'Challa to bring his cousin Killmonger and she gave me a knowing smile and said, We'll talk about that later, because clearly she's not allowed to talk about Killmonger. So it's kind of funny, but keep that in mind. Like, if you're bringing your kids here and they only know them from the MCU stories, the characters might have to kind of dance around what they're talking about. But from what I've seen, they're awesome with the kids, and the kids seem to all be having a good time. They're not going to shut your kids down. They just might have to, like, not directly talk too much about things that are in the MCU or, like, steer the conversation another way. But anyway, all the characters have come by so quickly. The character interactions were really long and really great. Took lots of photos with them. And now it's time to check out the buffet. All right, headed over to the buffet. You enter right here, plates are right in the middle. And then either way you go is the exact same, I was told. So let's see what we have. We're gonna grab a plate. Ooh, I like that you get a little tray with a Captain America thing on there. Thank you so much, Joseph. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Starting with looks like plain dinner rolls and butter. I'm gonna save my stomach space for something more exciting. Got some fresh fruit here as well as some salad bar offerings, including a pasta salad. Next up, a carving station with some strip loin again, it looks like, and some horseradish. Next up, we've got a couple of pizzas, cheese and pepperoni, some little cheeseburger sliders. Uh, this is shrimp and orzo, some baked chicken and some mac and cheese. Rounding us out here with some little mini hot dogs. It, looked like, it looks like these are like grilled cheeses on little rolls as well. I'm excited about those. Some tater tots. I was told that this is meatless beef stew. So this is a vegan option right here. Some roasted cauliflower and some potatoes. And last on the buffet, we've got our cute desserts, chocolate chip cookies, mini key lime pies, macarons, and these Spider-Man cookies that Spider-Man said he wasn't super fond of got my plate. I grabbed a little bit of Caesar salad. I'm, I can't resist a Caesar salad. Some pasta salad, macaroni and cheese, a strip loin with some horseradish. That'll be a direct comparison. Um, pizza, cauliflower, one of the little baby grilled cheeses, and a couple desserts. So let's see how this is. Starting with the prime rib. I'm once again surprised at the quality of buffet prime rib at a theme park. I actually think I like this horseradish better. It's a little bit tangier and zippier. It's got more horseradish in it. The other one was didn't have as much of that kick. I know horseradish is definitely an acquired taste, but I'm I'm actually surprised at this. I did not think I'd like this meat at all, but it's not bad. I'm gonna try the macaroni and cheese now. It's a little bit runnier than the pasta was over at Hollywood and Vine. The cheese sauce isn't as thick or as strongly cheese flavored, but I think your kids will enjoy it. Gonna get in this pasta salad as well. Nothing super revolutionary, it's just pasta salad. It's got some salami, some cheese, some olives, Italian dressing on it, but I love pasta salad. It's a uh, oil-based, not mayonnaise-based, so it's pretty light. Also grab some Caesar salad. That tastes like a quick service Caesar salad. Nothing unique, but not bad. Now I'm gonna try this pizza, which I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm a little worried about. There's not a lot of crust integrity. That's definitely not as good as when they serve the jumbo slices here during the day. It tastes like cafeteria pizza. It's fine, your kids will like it, but it's quick service pizza. That's not great. Uh, I'm gonna try some cauliflower. Cauliflower's not bad. It's nice and crispy, so it's cooked well. It's a little over salted for me. I don't love salty foods, and it tastes like they went a little heavy on the salt, but I appreciate that they gave a vegetable offering. Now here's this like grilled cheese, which I'm kind of obsessed with. 
literally just cheese on like a Parker House roll with some butter and salt on top. So it's obviously delicious. Clearly, they are really catering towards the kids that come here, and your kid's gonna eat this. Some macaron. What? This is cake section. We can eat it's not a bad cookie, but it doesn't taste like any macaron I've ever had because the inner parts of it is like chocolate frosting. It's really fudgy in there as opposed to normally when you have a macaron, the filling's really light. So it's very good if you like chocolate, it's really rich, but it, it's not what I think of when I think of a macaron. And last but not least, don't tell Spider-Man, but I am gonna eat his face. This is just a sugar cookie. The frosting, it's not really frosting. It's just like almost like printed on there. So it's not super sweet. It's just pretty basic. I'm so sorry, I ate your face. Yeah, see. Was it good? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, there you go. It's a good look. Thank you. Yeah, no one will see you now. No. You're in disguise. And I can't see anyone, so it's perfect. <laughs> I can't see a thing. Just wrapped up at the Marvel character dinner and I'm gonna say I really enjoyed it. Uh, I think the addition of having the photo download is a really nice touch. They're going to give you a card when you check in that's similar to like a photo pass card. Uh, and then throughout the evening, the characters were pulling people over to take pictures with them with the Universal photographers. And then that card they give you, uh, you enter it on, on the Universal website and there's instructions on there because you get one of the downloads available included with your meal. So I do think that's a nice touch to give you one of the professional photos for free or included with the cost of your meal. Now. The food was fine. I think the food at Disney was certainly better than the food here. However, it was better than I expected. I expected it just to be pizza, maybe some pasta dish and a salad and some cookies. And I was pleasantly surprised that we had things like the carving station, the baked chicken, the pasta salad, etc. I also think they did a good job knowing their audience and having things like the little cheeseburger sliders, the little hot dogs, even that little grilled cheese, which is obviously very clearly kid food that's who you're catering towards. So I think your kids are gonna walk away happy at either location, but mom and dad, adults, you might walk away a little bit happier over at Disney. I especially think Disney won on desserts. That bread pudding was great, whereas these desserts were just fine. But let's talk about the characters. The characters were awesome. I did not feel rushed at all talking to the characters. Each one came to our table for two, three, four minutes, talked to us, were very interactive, asking us questions, we were asking them questions, and then they'd be like, hey, let's take a picture, let's get up, let's do different poses, let's go over here. And we saw the characters multiple times. So I do think that while it's amazing to meet Mickey and Minnie and your classic characters, it definitely felt more rushed over at Hollywood and Vine, the character experiences, than it did here. And I know what you're gonna say, there's the obvious difference that these characters can talk to you and interact with you a little bit easier than Mickey and the gang can. But still, I think the character interactions here were A+. Ultimately though, I think you're booking these character experiences to meet the characters. I don't think anyone thinks that the food at either of these character meals or most character meals in general is worth the high price tag. But depending on you, depending on your kids, depending on who you're with, Paying the high price tag to meet a bunch of your favorite characters while sitting down in air conditioning and having really good one-on-one -on -one interactions with them may justify that cost. I mean, we got to meet six different heroes here at Marvel, and yes, you can meet these characters out and about in the park, but it's a lot more pleasant to be sitting down, having them come to you and having those fun interactions. Ultimately, I don't know that there is a winner. I think the winner is whichever characters you like more. If you got a Spider-Man obsessed kid or you got a Minnie Mouse obsessed kid, I think that's your answer. I love character dining in general. I think it's a lot of fun. Grown-ups, don't be too cool for it. Just play along with the story. Ask them funny questions. Don't ask them anything weird or inappropriate, okay? Don't be weird. I know Spider-Man suit's tight, but don't be weird about it. Well, that concludes my delicious meal of eating with both Mickey Mouse and Spider-Man in the same day. I had a great time. Let me know which character dining is your favorite down in the comments. Do you want to see more character dining or more comparison videos? Let me know that as well. I actually really hate pitting the two of these against each other because I think both Disney and Universal have strengths and weaknesses and I think you don't have to choose which one is better. I really enjoyed showing you offering side by side without having to pit them against each other and say that by liking one you can't like the other or whatever that nonsense is that people seem to think sometimes. So let me know what else you want to see at both of these parks. Let me know if there's other side by sides you'd like to see. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow us on social, join our Discord, and until next time, friends, I'm Molly, and it's been magical and super.